Hello, welcome to Talk About It with Kate. I'm Kate, and we're going to talk about it. All right. Today, I'm from um, London, South London to be exact. <laughs> At least that's what the Londoners said to me when I met them. <laughs> Hi, you guys, and welcome back to episode two of Talk About It with Kate. I am Kate, and if you're new to this, welcome. If you're true to this, welcome back. So we have a lot to talk about, you guys. I think that this last two weeks, almost three weeks, has been the craziest I've had all year. And we're going to talk about that. So first, last week, or not last week, the week before when we dropped our first podcast, we got a beautiful response. And I would just like to thank everybody who tuned in, who commented, who reached out to me to let me know what you thought about the podcast. That meant so much to me. And I was really excited about the overall response. So I had put a Q&A on my Instagram stories just to open it up and really give you guys a chance to connect with me so that I can answer the questions, you know, not live, but on the segment. So we're going to start off with those questions. I have them here. Um, they're kind of all over the place, so forgive me. But I mean, I feel like the rest of this podcast might be all over the place as well. So first things first, somebody asked me, uh, what got you into wedding planning? I do destination wedding planning now, which is awesome. Congratulations on that. Uh, I feel like I touched on that in my last podcast, how I got into planning. But initially, it was a mix of me being a makeup artist for weddings and brides and me working in production on set. And I kind of just married the two. I felt like w as a makeup artist on on set I guess on site at the venue I was always doing things like checking in with the photographer with the coordinator making sure the bride was staying on you know time with her timeline so all of these things kind of just bled together and here came my wedding planning business so the next question is how close are you to meeting Riri and the answer to that is, I don't know. I would love to know. I'm manifesting, claiming, and praying that 2023 is our year. And I feel as though at this point, I have so many lanes to meet the girl, whether that be acting and modeling, or event planning, or makeup artistry, or I just run into her in the streets of LA like everybody else. I have yet to see that girl in person. I mean, I've seen her in like 2000. 10 or something at her concert but to answer your question i don't know but collectively as a unit let's put that energy towards kate and riri becoming best of friends because i just feel as though that's what that's what would happen she's a pisces i'm a libra we're compatible it's just it's just is what it is so next question how to adult now this is a loaded question and I see that the person who asked me is a little bit younger. So I'm going to make this a two part because another question is advice for younger girls who are coming into their 20s or adulthood. And to make it brief, but not too brief, adulting is a trial and error. If you have adults in your life that you look up to, I definitely recommend asking them the hard-hitting questions or figuring out what it is that you want from them or what it is that you're trying to learn as you grow into an adult. Me being 28 years old, I feel like I'm still coming into adulthood, so to speak. I feel like your teens, are, you're still a kid, even though we feel like we have all the answers. You don't. Your early 20s, you feel like you have all the answers again because it's like I'm 20. I'm 21, I can drink, I can vote, you know, all these things. Then you're 25 and you're like, I can rent a car. I could do all these fun things. But still, every year of your life, you're going to see like, wow, I really knew nothing. And what I've learned in coming into my adulthood is that I really lean on my parents or older folks that I look up to and I ask them questions all the time. I will call up anybody and be like, hey, if it's a tax question, if it's a money budgeting question, if it's whatever you view as adulting, the answers are out there. You just have to find them. And then advice to younger girls and boys coming into their 20s. I, what I've learned about being in my 20s is that they go quick. I personally can't believe that I'm 28 years old. <laughs> I don't think that it's really resonated with me. 
yet. Granted, it just happened in October. Um, it is now, what, November 27th? My birthday was October 21st. And still, when people ask me, I'm like, I'm... I think I feel like I'm still 25, but COVID, COVID did that. I'm stuck in 2020, to be honest. So my advice is to have fun. Don't put so much pressure on yourself to feel like you have to have it all figured out because you won't. You probably won't until much later anyways. So don't stress yourself and don't lose your 20s trying to be this adult or trying to figure out your life because it'll change every year from my experience. Um, let's see, next question. I got quite a few, so I'm not going to answer all of them. Um, but let's see. Your take in, and optimizing your personal brand in building a business. That's a big, big question too. I feel like I should have a whole segment dedicated to that. But what uh, I just mentioned or stated is, you know, finding a mentor, or finding somebody who is already doing the things that you want to do and either getting advice, studying you know, their brand, their tactics without completely copying because I don't believe in straight up plagiarism. I don't believe in straight up jacking somebody else's style. Whatever you do, make it your own. That's with anything. You know, I feel like I have a couple brands going right now and every single one I have either studied or I have found a niche that I resonate with that I feel like my audience would, you know, accept or respond to positively and that's how I've built my brand but that's just very much scratching the surface I definitely do want to have a whole podcast segment dedicated to business building your brand my trials and errors and things like that and okay last question is how to set boundaries and keep them I feel as though I love this question because for the last I would say Five years in particular I've really honed in on setting boundaries and keeping them and sticking to my word to myself because I kept finding myself asking like why am I upset about the situation or why didn't I speak up about this earlier to avoid what I'm feeling now things like that and that's with all boundaries I mean boundaries are as small as you know I don't want to stay out late to cutting people off the first time they show you themselves to not going back to an ex like what uh, those kinds of things like if you say it to yourself if these are things that you feel like I don't want to be upset anymore about this person doing this that's a boundary that right there that hard stop is a boundary and to keep it is discipline and to know that the only person that you're letting down is yourself and that's the worst part. I think, you know, like you could disappoint people and it sucks to, to disappoint like your parents or your friends or whoever, but it's even worse to disappoint yourself. So I think my advice overall would be keep yourself in mind. Like you have to love yourself as much as you may love someone else that you are setting the boundary for in order to keep that relationship or, you know, you have to love yourself more to be completely honest. Like I have tatted, I have love yourself tattooed on you, on you, <laughs> on me. And this was my first tattoo and it it's really weighed heavy on me, but it took me a very long time to listen and like believe that I needed to love myself in order to be happy. And I've personally set a lot of boundaries the last two years and I have cut off friends. I have stopped going places. I have stopped doing things that just aren't and weren't good for me and I felt really terrible about myself for no reason and really if you look at your life and you feel like my job is good my health is good I have this I have this I have that and there is still something that is weighing on you that's that's the boundary you got to set so just keep that in mind okay that's it for today's Q&A let's get into the juice the topics the things that I want to talk about now in my life so, y'all, I went to Mexico. It was so crazy. I haven't been to Mexico, I think, since I was like 12 or 13. My mom used to take my brother and I to Rosarito all the time when it was more touristy, less dangerous. And that was the last time I went to Mexico. And, you know, I always wanted to go back when I was like old enough to drink and like party because I saw... You know, when you walk in the streets or like you're at the hotel or the resort or whatever, people are living their best life. But I was like a kid. So I was so excited for this trip. 
My dad planned it. We went to Isla Mujeres, which is an island just outside of Cancun. It's like Cancun's Catalina. You have to take a ferry to get there. So let me just, let's let's back it up. Let me tell you guys how this trip started and how it went. We started the trip. We planned it. Everything, you know, we had an itinerary, all these things. And, you know, as most things that are planned go, they don't go to planned. So I'm going to just preface with that. We had to fly to into Cancun to get to Isla Mujeres, okay? Granted, I live in Los Angeles, so I had to fly from Los Angeles to Houston, Houston to Cancun, and so on and so forth. So, <laughs> right out the gate, y'all. I don't know why I thought it would be cute to book a 5 a.m. flight. I, I was too um, rambunctious. You know, I was feeling too... <laughs> I don't know what I was feeling. But that was a terrible idea because, of course, I overslept. Of course, naturally, I overslept. And this was the day that it was pouring rain. Cats and dogs in Los Angeles. I don't even know what date in particular that was because it's escaping me currently. But it was pouring rain at 5 o'clock in the morning whilst I'm rushing to LAX to catch my flight on time. And I did catch it. Praise be. I caught my flight. Barely. I was in security. And you know how they say like little messages over the thing? They say, Caitlin Williams, we need you in gate 18. We don't want to leave you, but we will. Verbatim is what this lady said. I was like, I, <laughs> I was in the security line sweating profusely. And the guy who was, you know, TSA, he was like, yo, are you good? Like, are you sick? Is something going on? And I was like, I'm about to miss my flight. And shout out to this man. I don't know who you are, but you really helped the kid. Because he took all my stuff and just pushed it through. Like, he took it in front and pushed it through the little thing. And <laughs> him and the other TSA, once they saw me, like, putting my jacket in my, I mean, they were just slides. But my shoes back on, they were like, run, go, go. And I honestly started to put my shoes on, kicked them off, picked them up, and ran to my gate. And I was the last person in the gate. Literally, the ticket girl was walking to the cabin to, like, close the door. And I was like, wait, I'm here. And then everybody started clapping once I got on the plane. That was kind of nice because um, I was really crying on the inside. I couldn't believe it. I like, got on the plane, and I was like, I, like, put my hand on the cabin, and I was, like, holding my chest. And I was like, <sighs> And everybody was clapping. They were like, you made it. And yeah, that was great. So caught the flight. I fell asleep super quick. Slept the whole time. Got off. My layover in Houston was peachy keen. It was just fine. I think it was like two and a half hours, but that was fine because I was starving and I needed to regather myself and like just relax for a minute. So that was cute. You know, then I get to Cancun. So listen, I had to meet up with my brother in Cancun. And he got there hours before I did, okay? On the plane, um, my phone starts glitching. And in a way that it was not like I could restart it, it was like I didn't have enough storage or just I didn't have enough time to figure out what was going on with my phone, right? And I needed to meet up with my brother. Well, as it turns out, once we got on the plane to board to Cancun, I was delayed an hour, okay? And we had a shuttle booked and planned for us to be on time to take us to where we needed to go next so whatever we get to cancun can't find my brother find him in customs uh he got held up for like a minute then he had to find our shuttle driver and it was just so crazy because the shuttle driver was not he was pissed he was not trying to wait for us or he was like not trying to like give us our car the initial car he was like you're gonna have to go with somebody else like this family and we were like no sir no thank you no thank you and it was, that was fine too. We resolved it. Okay, so this is already since 5 o'clock in the morning. It is now 5 p.m. by the time I get to Cancun. I'm exhausted. I can't even I can't even think anymore, okay? Then I can't find my charging pack to my phone. <laughs> and what happens, y'all? My phone dies, okay? We have to go from a shuttle to a ferry to, get, to take the ferry to Isla Mujeres, okay? My phone dies on the ferry. I don't have an address to the Airbnb. I don't have my dad's number memorized as, you know, like I should have, whatever. My brother's phone dies. He's thinking I got a charger. I think he got a charger. It, 
So now we start the adventure. <laughs> it is now 8 p.m. in Mexico, in Cancun. Two people, <laughs> two Americans <laughs> with dead phones <laughs> in the pitch black of night. Also, Isla Mujeres is an island. There's very little lighting outside of the city part. And our Airbnb was like along the coast. No street lights, no no sense of direction. I one thing y'all should know about Kate, I'm terrible with directions. I'm direction impaired. I can't y'all are lucky I could tell my left from my right most days, okay? It's really sad. <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to get better at it. But now we're sitting in this taxi. Granted, I speak conversational Spanish, okay? I understand a lot. Yo entiendo mucho, pero no hablo mucho, okay? The driver was like rolling his eyes. Already he's irritated because he could tell that I'm about to struggle to speak to him. But I'm going to struggle because you're going to help me figure out where I gotta go. We needed to find somewhere to like just plug in our phones, whatever the case was. We find somewhere. It was like a, a mini bank because also I needed to get pesos, okay? So, didn't get the pesos, by the way. I get my phone on for like, it was like 5%, which was like enough just so that I could see the address to where I was going. And then these two Americans who like live on the island could tell that I was in distress <laughs> with my brother. And they pulled up in like their little Jeep dune bug thinking, thinking thing. And they were like, where are you trying to go? We're going to help you. I got a super fast charger, all these things. And they helped us. So God bless them too. I didn't even catch their names. I was so stressed. Once I got my phone on and my dad texted us and we got a hold of him, I was like, I got to go. Thank you so much. And I had full intention of finding them again, or I thought. Didn't find them. But shout out to those really nice people who helped us. So we get to the house. It's like 9.30 at this point. We were supposed to be there at 7. We missed dinner. We missed the first excursion of the day. It was so fun. My dad was so upset. I'm so sorry. It was just a mess. Murphy's Law, for those who don't know, is anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And that was the premise of this trip because two people got food poisoning. My stepmom broke her foot. <laughs> My brother almost drowned. The power went out on the whole island. It was just, you know, overall very crazy. But we had pockets of fun. And so I will not let the things that went wrong take away from the fact that my dad planned a really fun family trip because overall we still had a good time. It was just the bad stuff was like really bad and so annoying. <laughs> uh, but I say all that to say, if you're going to Cancun or Isla Mujeres, keep in mind that the travel is hefty and you will need a whole day of traveling to get settled in, to get acquainted with your surroundings. Just keep that in mind, okay? Because now I know. So next on the list of crazy things that I did this last two weeks, I went to Complex Con with Quarterfinal. It is a streetwear brand and they invited me to host their space and conduct some interviews while on site at Complex Con. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's held at the Long Beach Convention Center and it's all centered around fashion, clothing, streetwear design. It's really dope. It was my first time there. I've been wanting to go. And it was insane. The talent that was there, the artists that were there, I got to interview some really amazing people. One of them being Jeff Hamilton. He's a famous designer. He does jackets for just about everybody in the industry. And he gave me the honor of interviewing him briefly. And we're gonna insert that clip right here. <laughs> <laughs> Quarterfinal, this is our brand. Our slogan is pushing limits, so pushing your own limits. So if I can ask you, what would you do today or any other time to push your own limits? Just uh, never stopping, that's it. Just always working. There's no there's no limit. I don't know if, if there is a limit. So you, why, as long as you keep on run, walking, you don't stop, you know? So The limit does not exist. There's no limit. The sky, the sky is not the limit. It's not. I love that. <laughs> he was a peach to be honest. Um, and he was really humbled by my reaction to his clothing because I'm new to his designs. And I think that him like feeling the freshness of like somebody not being awestruck by the fact that like he is in the industry and he's 
a celebrity, so to speak, I was just like, yo, these are so cool. Like, these jackets are fire. And he was showing me around the space, and it was just really dope. So Complex Con is dope. If you can go next year, I highly recommend it, especially if you love fashion, especially if you're a creative. I felt inspired just being in the space. It was so amazing. And last but not least, we have to talk about Twitter. If you're on Twitter, then you know what I'm talking about. Last week was so dramatic, okay? Let me just preface by saying I introduced the first podcast by saying that I'm a Twitter girl. I love Twitter. I stay up to date with it. I think it's a great app, especially for trending topics or you know, news, breaking news. Like Twitter is the first to know about it, to post about it. Most of the content is credible. So I would just say that. Okay, now, if you don't know, Elon Musk purchased Twitter for something crazy like $44 billion, okay? I knew this to be true, and I was kind of worried about what he might do considering Elon isn't necessarily like... I don't. I can't imagine him knowing how Twitter actually works considering quite a few things. I won't shade him, but I just wasn't thinking. Like, he, This is not the one for him. It was an investment, whatever the case, don't know. Twitter in itself, you know, is a machine. It's crazy how it operates. It's crazy the way information gets out. And Twitter banned people for hate speech, for X, Y, and Z. You can imagine who I'm talking about. So Elon bought Twitter. And he had acquired it for, I want to say, two weeks before, I think, something like 200 employees resigned. After he came in, Elon came in and fired pretty much every one of the executives with like the exception of a few. And so in retaliation, all of the employees dipped on the same day. Having to close their San Francisco office, I believe, is what Twitter was telling me. So anyway, that day when everything came out that the employees did like a walkout or they didn't show up to work, Whatever the T was, babes, <laughs> somebody tweeted that the engineers who keep Twitter running when there's like bugs or it crashes or there's an update, they quit, okay? So they were saying something like, basically Twitter is going to keep running until it stops because then there's nobody to fix it. Babes, babes, when I tell you it was like the Titanic sinking, <laughs> the tweets were hilariously sad and grim but it just goes to show how heavy of an impact social media has especially twitter and i was one of those people you guys i was sitting in a restaurant by myself scrolling and kind of like shedding a tear or two because like instagram can go okay facebook can go twitter i need i need twitter to stay and tiktok because tiktok provides me with a lot of serotonin that I need on a daily basis to keep going in this life. But Twitter, in particular, is the morning news, it's the 411, it's the tea babes. And so Elon was being very, um, I don't know what the word is for like, um, he was mocking everybody basically. Like he was like, this is not, you guys are being dramatic, which we were because Twitter is here today. But it's, that's besides the point. He knows the weight that he holds right now and i don't like that i don't like that at all but whatever it is what it is if twitter dies then there will be another app i'm sure and i'll let y'all know if there is because what we how else will we get the news do newspapers even exist anymore like do i don't know <laughs> who needs a newspaper when you have twitter <laughs> God. So uh, that's uh, basically an overview of my life for the last two weeks. It's been crazy and insane and I've been working. I, I think that I worked myself into the ground this month and that's fine. But now I will be taking a much needed break, a much needed sabbatical. Is that what it's called? Where people like have to stop working for their mental health? Like, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine, I promise. But I love that I'm giving myself this grace and this time to just unwind and relax. And if you are a workaholic like me, this is your reminder to give yourself some time off. 
you know, get a massage, go to the beach, touch some grass, hug a tree. I don't know. Whatever you got to do to make sure you're good, we're good, do it. So that concludes today's episode of Talk About It With Kate. Thanks for talking about it with me. Thank you for lending me your ears and your eyes if you're watching this on YouTube. We will be back very soon with our next podcast. To stay up to date with all the latest, please follow Candy House on Instagram, Caitlin Diaries on Instagram, and you will get all the exclusive drops, dates, and content. Thank you, y'all. Until next time, stay beautiful.